In the mists of ancient Britain, where magic mingled with reality and heroes were forged in the heat of battle, the tale of King Arthur and Excalibur emerged as one of the most cherished legends. It begins long before Arthur became the revered king, a time when the land was embroiled in chaos and discord. Britain was fragmented, plagued by petty kings and warring factions. The rightful heir to the throne was lost, and the kingdom languished under a shadow of despair. It was during this tumultuous period that the wise and enigmatic Merlin, a powerful wizard, foresaw the arrival of a leader destined to unite the land. This leader would be born of noble blood and would wield a sword of unimaginable power, Excalibur. Arthur was the son of Uther Pendragon, the previous king, but he was raised in secret by Sir Ector, a noble knight. Little did he know of his royal lineage, as Uther's enemies sought to extinguish the bloodline. As Arthur grew, so did the whispers of destiny. The day would soon come when he would discover his true heritage and the fate that awaited him. The kingdom was in disarray when Uther died, leaving no clear successor. The lords and nobles gathered to determine who would take the throne, but their disagreements only led to further discord. Then a remarkable event unfolded in a snowy glade. A magnificent stone appeared, containing a sword embedded within it. The inscription read, Whoso pulleth out this sword from this stone, an anvil is rightwise king born of England. Word spread like wildfire, and nobles and knights flocked to the stone, each attempting to draw the sword but failing. Days turned to weeks, and hope began to dwindle. It was during this tumultuous time that young Arthur, unaware of his destiny, found himself at the sight of the stone. Sir Ector and Arthur's brother Kay had come along, but Kay had forgotten his sword for an upcoming tournament. Determined to help his brother, Arthur approached the stone. With a deep breath and a heart filled with resolve, he grasped the hilt of the sword. To his astonishment, the sword slid free as if it were merely a feather. The crowd fell silent, stunned by the sight. Arthur, the unassuming squire, had drawn Excalibur, and with it, the mantle of kingship was thrust upon him. Merlin, ever watchful, stepped forward to acknowledge the prophecy's fulfillment. You, Arthur, are the rightful king of Britain, he proclaimed, his voice echoing through the glade. With Excalibur, you shall unite the realm and bring peace to these lands. Though Arthur was crowned king, his journey had only just begun. He faced challenges not only from rival factions, but also from within. The burden of leadership weighed heavily on him, and he often sought counsel from Merlin, who guided him in matters of the heart and mind. Yet deep within, Arthur felt a longing, an uncertainty about the sword that now rested at his side. Excalibur was powerful, but was it truly his? One fateful day, while pondering the depths of his kingship, Arthur rode to the shores of a tranquil lake, the waters shimmering like liquid silver under the sun. He dismounted and walked along the shore, reflecting on the trials he had faced and those yet to come. As he stared into the water, he noticed something unusual. A beautiful woman emerged from the depths, her long hair flowing like strands of silk, her presence ethereal and captivating. She was the Lady of the Lake, a mystical being revered in legend and song. Arthur felt an inexplicable pull towards her, a sense of both reverence and curiosity. As she drew nearer, the waters parted gracefully, revealing the intricate gown she wore, adorned with shimmering jewels and embroidered patterns of ancient tales. Arthur, King of Britain, she spoke her voice melodic and soothing. I have awaited your arrival. You wield Excalibur, but the sword's true power lies not only in its steel, but in the spirit that guides its bearer. Arthur, taken aback by her beauty and wisdom, replied, I have drawn the sword from the stone, yet I feel a void within me. What does it mean to be its rightful king? The Lady of the Lake smiled gently. The sword is more than mere metal. It is a symbol of the values you must uphold. Honor, bravery, 
and compassion. You must learn to wield it with a heart full of purpose. Only then will you unlock its true potential. With a wave of her hand, she revealed a shimmering reflection in the water. In it, Arthur saw visions of battles yet to come, the struggles he would face to unite the realm, and the challenges of leading with integrity. The images flickered like flames, illuminating the path of his destiny. Seek me whenever you are in doubt, Arthur, she continued. I will grant you guidance, and in times of darkness, Excalibur will shine brightly, lighting the way. As the vision faded, the lady reached into the water, producing a shimmering scabbard. This scabbard is as important as the sword itself. While you wear it, you will be protected from harm. It represents the peace you must strive to create. Arthur accepted the scabbard, feeling its weight in his hands, a tangible reminder of his duty. He understood that his journey as king was not merely about power, but about serving his people, protecting the innocent, and forging alliances. With a bow of gratitude, Arthur thanked the Lady of the Lake, promising to honor her words and the legacy of Excalibur. As he turned to leave, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. The sword at his side was no longer just a weapon. It was a beacon of hope for the land of Britain. With Excalibur and the scabbard, Arthur returned to Camelot, where he began the arduous task of uniting the factions. He rallied noble knights around his round table, emphasizing equality and camaraderie. Each knight brought their strengths, and together they formed a brotherhood that would stand against tyranny and injustice. As the years passed, Arthur faced countless challenges. Battles against jealous kings, the treachery of those who sought his throne, and internal strife within his own court. Yet, in every trial, Excalibur gleamed with a brilliance that reflected Arthur's unwavering spirit. He remembered the Lady of the Lake's words, drawing strength from her wisdom. Time went on, and Arthur's reign flourished. Peace began to blossom across the land, and tales of his bravery spread far and wide. Yet, with each victory, the shadows of betrayal loomed closer. The heart of Camelot was tested when Arthur's most trusted knight, Lancelot fell in love with his queen, Guinevere. The affair threatened the very foundation of Arthur's kingdom, and the betrayal cut deeper than any blade. In a moment of rage and despair, Arthur sought out Excalibur, desperate for clarity amidst the chaos. He rode back to the tranquil lake, calling out to the Lady of the Lake for guidance. As the waters rippled, she appeared once more, her expression a blend of sorrow and understanding. King Arthur, the heart of a ruler is often tested in the fires of betrayal. Do not let anger blind you to the lessons of compassion and forgiveness. Tears filled Arthur's eyes as he spoke. How can I forgive when I feel so deeply betrayed? Forgiveness does not erase the past, but allows you to move forward. Your strength as a king lies in your ability to rise above personal grievances and seek what is best for your kingdom. You have the power to shape the future, Arthur. With renewed resolve, Arthur returned to Camelot, determined to face the challenges ahead with wisdom rather than vengeance. The lessons learned from Excalibur and the Lady of the Lake guided his actions, helping him navigate the treacherous waters of loyalty and love. In time, Arthur confronted Lancelot and Guinevere, seeking to understand their hearts and intentions. Though the pain was deep, Arthur recognized the humanity in their struggles. His leadership was not only about wielding a sword, but also about embracing the complexities of the heart. Thus, the legend of King Arthur and Excalibur, intertwined with the grace of the Lady of the Lake, became a tale not only of valor and destiny, but also of understanding, compassion, and the enduring strength of a leader's heart. And so, as the ages passed, the story endured a testament to the virtues that truly make a king.